Welcome to this evening's webinar, Networking Cafe for the Underconnected. So we developed this webinar because we know that there are both extroverts and introverts in our student and alumni population that struggle with networking because we asked them, you know, how are your networking efforts coming along? And oh, I hate networking. So we decided with that in mind that we were going to come up with a webinar that would feature creative strategies to help you in your networking efforts. And so um, we're very glad to have you on with us this evening. And uh, Senior Career Service Advisor Nicole Skalski is going to be our technical moderator. And we're also pleased to have our Career Services intern for this summer, Samantha Shore, presenting um, from Georgia. So we're um, happy to have her on. And she's going to be presenting um, to you her strategies for landing her internship with us. So um, with that, uh, let's go ahead and move on to our content. And so first off, um, Nicole is going to launch our poll. So how would you describe your attitude towards networking? Please go ahead and type your answer in the questions box. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Any, <laughs> anything goes here. So, you know, whatever just, you want to say about it. Feel free to be candid and, okay, great. Hate it. Necessary evil. It's got a We're bad name, it. doesn't it? It really has a Another bad. necessary evil. Okay, and both from David. That's interesting. Okay. Any other emotions there? I'm curious about learning how to do it. Okay, other strategies. Great. A little bit cautious. Ooh, a lot of you are saying hate it, hate it. Okay. Maybe I, I like, shouldn't have suggested that to everyone. Maybe I shouldn't have That's okay. Have You're in that. the right place because yeah. we're going to hopefully give you some calming other strategies. A passive about it, indifferent. Okay, great. I enjoy meeting new people, but I do not know how to even start networking to save my life. Okay, thanks for that, Maggie. <laughs> okay, well, you know that you're all in a similar boat somewhat. So there's strength in numbers thinking that way. So thank you um, for sharing. Yes, yeah, thank you. So hopefully we'll share some good strategies that will help you think outside the box and maybe networking will look a little easier by the time we're finished with our webinar. So um, we're going to talk about stories of connection, and I'm going to share my own networking strategies um, moving to a new area, um, and I lean more towards the introverted side, and then Nicole is going to share her story about moving to, actually she made a cross, you know, between country move, so she um, had an even bigger adjustment to make, and she's going to talk about how she built her network. Um, when she made her move. And then we're going to be talking about topics and venues for making connections and then ways to maintain those strong connections once you have forged them. So that said, we'll go to um, the definition of networking. So it's the art of building and sustaining mutually beneficial relationships. I think that a lot of our hesitancy about networking stems from the fact that we're asking someone for help. We're asking for support from someone else. What we want you to think about is, you're building a mutually beneficial relationship. And in the beginning, it might be the case that the person you're networking with is sharing more information and helping you more, but hopefully there will be some situations where you'll be able to pay them back for their support of your efforts. And so um, Ann Cuddy, who is a Harvard psychologist, um, basically has um, come up with a list of 10 ways to make a great first impression. And she said that the first question that someone will ask about you, they will ask themselves this self um, subconsciously is, can I trust you? That's even more than whether you have the qualifications for the job or you know how skilled you are. When someone initially meets you, their subconscious is asking, are you someone I trust? Are you someone I'm going to like? And so um, the good thing about um, you know the introverts is they're really good listeners and they ask really good questions and that's a really good way to start building that relationship and building that trust. And also she um, stated that when you're first initially meeting someone, you want to listen a lot more than you talk. And so um, there was an interesting perspective I, I read recently about elevator pitches and this um, individual offered a little different perspective because usually we talk all about ourselves in a 30 second elevator. He said, you know, you might think about this differently and ask more questions rather than pitching your own qualifications. Really focus on how can I help the other person that I'm networking with. So I think, you know, introverts, like I said, we're really good listeners and we're analytical and we think a lot and we have a tendency to really listen and ask questions more. So that can be to our advantage if you think about um, those suggestions from those individuals. So then um, we talk about finding common ground and developing rapport. 
and then supporting your new connections, goals, and interests. Like I said, try to make it all about them, okay? And then consider ways to network both inside and outside your comfort zone. <laughs> Great. And so we talked about um, extroversion versus introversion. So if you've taken the Myers-Briggs type indicator, that's a very well-known personality assessment that's world-renowned, and it will give you a score whether you lean towards introversion or extroversion. Now, it's not an all-or-nothing equation because there are introverts that can do great public speaking in front of groups of hundreds of people, and there are extroverts that can spend lots of long hours alone studying in a library. So we don't want you to think of this as I'm an introvert or an extrovert. We all have both parts in our personality. It's just which way we have a tendency to lean most of the time. What's our natural inclination? So introverts think to talk. They generally go deeper. They energize more by themselves. So for example, if they go to a big party at the end of the night, they, they're the ones that will, if someone says, oh, let's go out and have, you know, have another chat. They're the ones who will say, you know, I, I'm kind of wiped out at this point. I'm just going to go home and chill out by myself. Okay, um, they focus more on thoughts and ideas and they have a preference for one-on-one -on -one discussion. And then extroverts talk to think. So it's often said that they think out loud. And um, they have a tendency to go wide. Okay, so they'll have a, maybe a broader network rather than, um, they'll have more connections rather than the deeper connections necessarily. They uh, have a tendency to energize around other people. Okay, um, they focus on people and events rather than thoughts and ideas, so they focus externally and they prefer group discussions and so Deborah Zach who wrote this book um, that we uh, mentioned at the end of this webinar she's excellent on this she's an engineer who became a consultant about networking and so her book is called networking for people who hate networking so it sounds like you can tell I was attracted to that that book title so I, I just ate that book up it was great but she says introverts connect and extroverts collect which I thought was an interesting way of and um, for those who are introverts or those who want to know more about introversion, Susan Cain in her book Quiet um, talks about the strengths that introverts offer and, um, and that they're under-celebrated oftentimes in our society. Um, and also that they comprise about 30 to 50 percent of the general population, so there are a lot of introverts out there. Um, so Deborah Zach mentions introverts, extroverts, and also I want to mention centroverts. So centroverts, as the name implies, are people in the middle between introversion and extroversion. And I just want to stress, as I mentioned before, I don't want to generalize that introverts have a more challenging time than extroverts at networking. It's really all about how you view it. Um, you know, but possibly if you are an introvert, it might be um, to your advantage and to your preference more to attend a small group gathering rather than a conference of 100 people. You might want to start out smaller and practice these networking skills in an easier environment before you go to that large conference where you are you haven't met anyone yet. Great. So, um, so now we're going to start sharing our stories. And so uh, as I mentioned, Nicole and I both made um, moves at various times in the last 10 years. And um, so I moved here from Washington, D.C. back in January 2007 um, for starting the Career Services Center. And, um, and I really didn't have much of a network here in the Twin Cities. And so I really had to work on building that um, network. So we're going to go to the next slide. That's okay. And so, um, so as I said, from D.C. to Minnesota. And so you can see that picture on the bottom left there. Um, I ended up, I, I thought it would be wonderful to live on a lake, and so I um, rented an apartment on a lake for the first few years I was here because that was kind of a dream of mine. You know, if you're going to be in the land of 10,000 lakes, you should live on one for a period of time. So I thought it was great in the summer because the, the lake was beautiful, but I'm telling you, we have about six months of winter in Minnesota, and that was frozen ice six months of the year, and I felt like throw on Walden Pond staring out at that that frozen lake, so um, so I decided to move closer into town, so I could I could feel a little less isolated. But anyway, so um, and so that just gives you an example. The the squirrel on the bottom right, I just gives you an example of the amount of snow that we'll get in a winter. So it's you know it's a lot of snow. We have pretty heavy winters, as you can imagine. So okay, so what were my strategies? Okay, so what I did, I gathered facts. I'm all about gathering data. I wanted to know as much about the Twin Cities as I possibly could before I moved. So 
So what I did is I came and I spent a week here in Minneapolis. I did volunteer projects. I attended a class that was given by um, a very well-known uh, career development person in our area. I attended a networking event. I held one-on-one -on -one meetings with individuals. I considered the housing costs and what the housing stock was like. I um, planned and processed that whole week through a transition journal because I'm an introvert. I like to think and analyze the process quite a bit. So I took a lot of notes so I could really mull the decision over. Um, and then once I did move to the Twin Cities, I volunteered for a professional association and also for um, a group called the Single Volunteers of the Twin Cities because um, I really like uh, giving myself a job. That's, I think, a really great introvert strategy in terms of building your network. So if you go and volunteer in a place that's networking and you have a, a purpose and a function and an activity to serve, to prove yourself to other folks, and it's a little easier, I think, personally, than going into a conference where I don't know people and I'm shaking hands with, with um, strangers and I'm starting from scratch. So I really like giving myself a job. Another example is if you're um, at a party that someone's throwing and you don't know too many people, just um, ask the host or hostess if you can serve the hors d'oeuvres or serve the drinks because it gives you a job and it gives you a reason to talk to people. So I think that's a, it's a good, good strategy for a lot of folks. Um, also, I have a tendency to prefer same time, same place, repeat interactions so that I feel um, very comfortable getting to know people on a deeper level. So um, those were my top strategies. And then, um, as uh, Deborah Zach said, strategies for introverts are pause, process, and pace. So pause, so stop to think before you speak. You know, so I was planning, I was researching, I was setting networking goals ahead of time. Um, focus on a few key individuals and go deeper in conversation to create those meaningful real connections. Delve deeply into projects and relationships and then allow downtime to process and restore energy. So Dory Clark is um, an author that's done quite a bit of, um, of uh, writing about branding for introverts. And she would tell the story of you know talking in front of a large group of people and they'd ask her to go out afterwards. And she, she said she just knew her personality well enough that she had to very politely decline because she knew that she was going to be with the large group of people again the next day and she needed to recharge her battery. So if that describes you, you might have a tendency to lean more towards the introverted spectrum. So, um, so in the book Quiet by Susan Cain, she talks about making a free trade agreement. Because remember, we all have um, parts of ourselves that are both extroversion and introversion. So you can make a deal with yourself and kind of fake it till you make it so that you adopt um, you know, let's say I'm very introverted. I'm going to act like an extrovert when I go to this networking event because I really want to network with key individuals in my field and I am job hunting. So I'm just going to fake it till I make it, go to that event and act as if I'm an extrovert. So um, you can do it. We all stretch at times. Um, you know, a lot, like I said, a lot of public speakers are introverts. So um, you can just kind of agree, you know, in this free trade agreement to take on a new hat temporarily because you feel like it's the purpose and the goal is worth it to, to really stretch yourself to support your goal in, in adopting that, that other personality type. And then Lisa Petrilli, who wrote a book called The Introvert's Guide to Success in Business and Leadership, she said, you know, look at networking as one good conversation, one person at a time. Really, if we think about the whole crowd of 100 people at this conference, that's a bit overwhelming. But if we really think about it, you know, I'm going to go to the registration table and get my badge, and maybe I'll just talk to the one person who's standing in line next to me. You know, and, and I did that actually at, at a residency that I attended as a student in February. And, um, you know, we were in a long line, and I just started talking to the person in front of me and the first person behind me. And the person behind me ended up, we had a lot in common. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we ended up staying in touch just as a result of being in the registration line together. So really just one conversation, one person at a time is a good easy way to look at that. Uh, reach out to new individuals via social media to say you look forward to meeting them at a conference or a networking event. So that's a great way because you know emails can break the ice, LinkedIn messaging can break that ice. Um, and take time to re-energize the time alone after busy social events. And so then I just, um, here's a word cloud of some um, jobs that I took on, volunteer roles. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, that's okay. Um, so, uh, so in terms of seeking deeper connections, I would put myself in situations where I would see the same people over and over again. 
And so, for example, I was um, in a leadership development class called Evolve, where we met once a month for eight months. And so then I decided I wanted to stay in touch with those folks, so I organized our reunions once a year. I volunteered at a conference. I became an alley representative on our townhouse board. Um, I blogged. I uh, got a position on our Parks and Recreation Commission um, for the suburb where I live. Um, I organized work lunches uh, to um, you know, make sure that people in the workplace knew each other better than just talking about work things. So I organized a group to go out to dinner once a month. So like I said, I, I like hosting and I like giving myself a job. And so you just want to try on hats to find what your right fit is for building your network. And so with that said, I'm going to hand it off to Nicole to provide her perspective as an extrovert and her experience with her move and getting settled here in Minnesota. Okay, thank you, Lisa. So as you can see from the slides, um, and you're probably maybe wondering, where is that? Most people have never heard of Guanajuato. It's in the center of the country. So I am originally from the Midwest, but had never lived in Minnesota before. I'm from Michigan, but um, went to study abroad in Mexico. I met my husband and had two kids. So I ended up living there 15 years out of the country. So that's a very long time. And then in 2008, decided to move up here. I had an 11-year-old and a 13-year-old, two boys at the time. So it was quite a challenge, and many people are like, well, how did you get to decide on Minneapolis? And it's because my parents were up here. So just my mom and my dad. It's not like I grew up here. Um, I had visited a few times, but, you know, I didn't have, you know, again, friends that I grew up with. It was pretty much just my mom and my dad, but at least it was a starting point. And unlike Lisa, I kind of jumped right in. I didn't do any research before. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself. Um, although I had visited, I didn't really do my job search. I mean, I did look up jobs, but I felt like um, at that point it was more, my priority was actually getting my children settled and getting them into school. As a mother, I was more concerned about their transition as opposed to mine because they were born and raised in Mexico. So it was more of a um, cultural transition for them. But I didn't do much research at all. Um, the only thing I researched was really if there were Zumba classes up here <laughs> because I had started doing uh, Zumba in Mexico and I just wanted to make absolutely sure that I could do it up here. And actually that led to some of my networking opportunities, believe it or not. So um, connecting in my community, one nice thing with moving up with my parents is they had pretty much monthly black parties. And I wasn't a, intending to get any type of interview or big connections out of the block party, but the very first one I went to, the first week I moved up here, and this was in 2008, so this was when the big financial crisis happened, um, I actually got an interview from my neighbor who runs a nonprofit. Uh, from, she said, oh, by the way, I mentioned I just moved here, I was looking for positions, and I spoke Spanish. And she has an international nonprofit, and it didn't end up working out, but just goes to show you, I mean, kind of on the fly, I met her, and I ended up getting an interview. Um, and then, of course, one good way was to meet uh, parents through my kids who were in school. And I got referred to uh, community ed. So here we offer community education, like adult education, at the local public schools. And I went and introduced myself to the director, pretty much cold, but someone recommended in, in the neighborhood that I do that. And he was very open. Um, he basically said, what do you want to teach? And I said, Zumba. There wasn't Zumba available and he's, until the following session, but he called me the next week and said his Spanish teacher canceled, so I ended up teaching Spanish. And then from that class, actually the adults in my class, in my Spanish class, are still in touch with me because they happen to live in the neighborhood. So, you know, that's kind of how my network developed serendipitously, I guess you would say, um, of just showing up and kind of on the fly. Uh, what else? And then I took a Zumba class, I would say a training class, where I met other instructors and then started teaching Zumba for community ed later. So kind of one thing led to another. And really it wasn't until a year later that I started uh, working at Walden. So unlike Lisa, I'm kind of like all over the place, scratching the surfa surface, um, not so much deep connections, but broader connections, whether it's through the parents or through my community, my neighbors, or now at work. Now that I've been here a good eight years, I'm now starting to develop 
I would say maybe less than five people, deeper connections. And I do feel as I'm getting older, I'm transitioning a little bit more into the introvert side. I don't know if Lisa would agree, but anyway, I do feel like I am. So um, extrovert connecting at work, oh, Lisa notices this all the time, and I really ne never thought of it because I'm always talking to people in the kitchen, on the elevator, and she just sometimes cannot get over it. Yeah, if I need to know anything about <laughs> any staff member here in the Walton, Minneapolis office, Nicole is my go-to person because she knows everything about everyone. So I definitely, and, and that's start, a real plus. Yeah. That's a real advantage. She's very well internally networked. So that's a huge so advantage. So the fourth bullet, I literally, I think I get that from my family. My dad, my grandfather, I mean, we could be in a parking lot and we'll just start talking to people. So I'll freely ask questions and share information to find common ground. How many kids do you have? Where do you live? I'm not afraid. I mean, I just, we'll just jump out. Um, and social breath as far as depth. Although, again, as I get older, I feel like I am looking for more depth. And those sporadic inter interactions where Lisa, I noted, you know, same people, same time, same place, maybe not same time, but, you know, a monthly meeting, a monthly mm -hmm. dinner, a weekly, you know, with the same people where, you know, honestly, I'm learning a lot in that way. That those are things that I could work on. So speaking of the, what did you call it earlier? Free trade agreement. Free trade agreement. Mm -hmm. I need to, like, start doing some of that instead of being all over the place. But anyway, so that's my story and different transitions in different ways. And I'll turn it back to, to Lisa from okay. her book. Great. And so um, I talked about the introverted strategies. And so the extrovert strategies are patter, promote, and party. So they are comfortable talking to strangers and spontaneous interactions. So for example, you know, talking to the person on the plane next to you when you're traveling, they converse with little effort. They're at ease with diverse people and circumstances. They easily talk about accomplishments. They cast a very wide social net and they gravitate towards a wider range of experiences and interests. They're always up for something new. So, and there are a lot of advantages in that style too. So, um, so anyway, so we want to present some ideas for some topics and venues for all personality types. So now we're going to go into that. So we talked about finding common ground and asking good questions, making it all about the other person when you're initially meeting someone. So um, you know you want to prepare ahead of time if you're going to a conference or a networking event. Be up on the news. Be up on trends in your career field. Have topics to chat about. Ask open-ended questions. Ask about the other person's career path, their accomplishments, their professional interests, their interests in positive social change, their personal interests, their whether you share common experiences. So, for example, Nicole talked about taking or uh, teaching too the Zumba class. So mm -hmm. she could talk, you know, well, what other Zumba classes have you taken, and you know, how does this um, compare to that? And you know, so um, talking about common experiences. Future plans, current projects, seeking advice, talking about your academic past. So these are all really good open-ended questions. You don't want to ask things like, what do you think of this weather? Oh, it's hot. And there goes the end of that conversation. You always want to ask the open-ended, you know, how do you feel about, you know, something? Or tell me more about what interests you or what you do in your free time. So you want to ask good open-ended questions that promote conversation with the other individual. Okay, and then so possible venues for connecting. So um, meetup.com, it sounds like a dating site. It is not a dating site. Okay, so uh, meetup.com, it's centered around um, various hobbies and interests. So they're hiking meetups, biking, traveling, walking, tennis. Um, we have one in the Twin Cities called Date Your Dog for um, owners of dogs with behavioral problems to get together and commiserate about their pets. So um, <laughs> You know, so there are meetups on just about anything. So you just go to meetup.com and you can create a profile. You don't have to put a picture up if you don't want to. You have to put a picture of something, but it doesn't have to be of you personally. And um, you basically search for uh, groups and topics. So if you're into sushi, there's we have a sushi meetup in the Twin Cities. So you just put in sushi and see what the groups are. And then the groups schedule events, announce events, and you just go. And generally there's not a fee to join meetup or a fee, you just pay for your dinner or, or whatever the activity is. So that's a great way to meet people because I know we've talked about personal connections, but the personal are as valuable as the professional because you just don't know what those social and personal connections can lead to. So an example, um, a former colleague of mine here at Walden, he was um, working uh, and going to school, he was getting his MBA, and he was on a softball team, and one of his teammates asked him, 
you know, what he was doing if he was going to be looking for a job when he finished his degree. And, and he said, yes, he was. And, and this gentleman ended up getting a, a great job with Target as a result of that networking connection on, on a softball team. So you just never know where you're going to make that next crucial connection. So nextdoor.com, if you're looking to meet people in your neighborhood, you can log on to that site. Again, another free site. You put in your zip code and you find out if there's an existing online community that covers your neighborhood. If there's not, you can create one and host one. And it's a great way to connect with your neighbors. So you can talk about items for sale or giveaway. Or if you're looking for a good electrician or a good painter for your house, um, you know, people share. It's kind of like an online Angie's list, if you will. People share a lot of recommendations. You know, so if, if you've got that nice, um, you know, gently used sofa that you put out on the curb, you know, you'll put it, it's like free cycle, you could just say if anybody wants to pick this up. So that's a great way to get to know your neighbors. Um, you can join your, uh, associ your alumni association for your previous degree, attend conferences, join professional associations. We have extensive lists of professional associations by degree program on our website. You can join neighborhood clubs, your neighborhood association, you know, church, your homeowners association, Toastmasters for for public speaking, an internationally known organization, a great way to meet um, individuals who are working on their public speaking skills. You can um, get involved with the lake, local chamber of commerce. You can do volunteering. You can take classes. You can teach community mm -hmm. education, like Nicole mentioned. Um, you know, so there are a lot of ways. And also, not to forget too, you know, your um, your class cafes for your classroom, and also the Walden online community as well. Um, and so when you go into the portal, you'll see that there's a tab um, for um, meeting other students through the Walden Online community. And you will go, if you go in there, you can find people by program organized there. So that's another way. So with that all said, all these suggestions and ideas, um, what is your next strategy for connecting? So please type your answer in the questions box and let's see what you're thinking about, what you have planned now. So what resonates with you of the strategies we've talked about? Anything so far? Meetup. Sounds great. Terrific. I really like Meetup. And you know how I said that I like to give myself a job? I host Meetup gatherings. So um, Meetup hosts will always... Um, the leaders of a group will often look for people to help them to, to host various events because their schedules get so busy. So if you want, I'm not the official owner of the meetup group, but I volunteer to be an organizer. So I host small group discussions for people. So it's kind of fun. Well, Maggie says, I'm going to probably do more online networking because she lives in a small town in the middle of nowhere. Okay. Luckily, on, online is a great option. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn. And LinkedIn, yeah, mm -hmm. and we're going to have some ideas for you at the end of this webinar, actually. Mm -hmm. Meet up. Okay, join a service organization. Fantastic. The mm -hmm. topic slide. Okay, list. Okay, introvert. We will have this. This is being recorded, and it will be archived on our website with a copy of the slides. Alumni Association and Meetup. Meetup is fantastic. This is Nicole, and I'm really impressed, actually, with Lisa, with all that she's done with Meetup, and she just attends them regularly and hosting them, which is fantastic. I mean, I should really be doing that myself. I feel like I'm too lazy, but she's. I'm really impressed with all of what, that Lisa's done. Thank you. Anything else? Because we did put out a lot of ideas. And if you're interested, like a lot of our doc students in teaching, that's community education or local you know, community adult education classes is a great way to build your adult teaching skills as well. And many times it's just much more informal. Great. Any other goals? Okay, we'll move on. And how the next question is, how do you stay in touch with connections, which is really important as well? I'll put the question up on the how do you stay in touch with connections? And that's probably a strategy that I'm lacking on as well. Are you all on LinkedIn? Are you on groups in LinkedIn? Okay, most of the time, email. Okay, great. Calvin? I'll just say I personally love LinkedIn because LinkedIn, when I'm connected to someone, I always read those message updates that I get. So, for example, a colleague of mine who had moved on to other things um, outside of Walden, 
you know, she's still a LinkedIn connection, and I got an um, update saying that she was having, um, she'd updated her profile to include a new role. So I congratulated her because LinkedIn prompts you if you want to congratulate someone or wish them a work anniversary. And so I got in touch with her, and it turns out she's teaching at Walden again. And oh I was just so God, thrilled. See? So, yeah, so we scheduled a phone know. call for next week because I didn't see that on her LinkedIn profile. I said, you got to add that on there. So A yeah, lot of people agree. One, yeah. two, three, four, five that's people fun. say LinkedIn, LinkedIn and yeah. Facebook, of course. Yeah, great. I mean, that's, that's a great way. For example, me, I've lived all over, so it's hard to stay in touch with people that I grew up with in Michigan, so I love to stay in touch that way. Great. Sign up LinkedIn, but no, no as much as I should. Well, Kelvin, we have tons of resources on our website on LinkedIn, and every year I do a LinkedIn uh, series that starts out with launching with LinkedIn, engaging with LinkedIn, and branding with LinkedIn. So it really breaks it down into more digestible pieces. So I definitely recommend you look at launching with LinkedIn. And Nicole is our LinkedIn guru, and she would even meet with you for an advising oh, yeah, appointment exactly. to look at your profile with you and give you pointers. For sure. That's a really strong area of expertise for Nicole. So that would be great. Excellent. Really? When? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> wanna, oh, go ahead. If you're not familiar with our appointments, we do offer one-on-one -on -one advising appointments as a Walden student. That's free to you. And just go to your portal, click on Schedule an Appointment, and just when you schedule, click uh, on the schedule, all days, all times, all advisors. And then you'll see my name, Nicole, and try to find a slot, spot that works for you. But again, all of our advisors are fantastic and well-versed on LinkedIn. So if you can't find a spot with me that works, any advisor would be great. Okay. Excellent. Thank you all. Great. You're welcome. Okay, so now we're going to turn it over to our rock star career services <laughs> intern who has been working with us this summer doing all types of wonderful projects for us and really hit the ground running. So she's fantastic. So Samantha, would you like to share with um, our audience how you landed your internship with us? Definitely. Um, that's definitely one of the biggest questions I get um, in my program because I was actually required to find an internship and as someone who is you know, a working adult, um, I found it kind of hard to find an internship where I was going to be able to get that experience, um, especially from afar. So that's definitely one of the biggest questions I get is, how is it that you're in Georgia and you found this internship in Minnesota and you're able to, you know, get work done and build those connections? Um, so it's, it's definitely a good experience and I'd love to talk to you guys about it. Um, I am located in Georgia and I'm about two hours from the school that I attend. Um, so I'm kind of all over the place. I take my classes online, um, and so I was used to doing the online thing for classes, and I didn't know if that was going to be a possibility for actually finding my internship online. Um, but I did find it, and that's where I'm at Walden right now. Um, can we go to the next slide? Sure. Okay. So one of the biggest things that I did was use online search features. Um, I knew that I needed to find a university. I wanted to work in a career services department and begin getting that exposure. Um, so I knew that I was going to have to find a university that had a great online presence. So the very first thing I did, it may seem cliche, is just to go to Google and type in what it is that you're looking for. Um, and then looking for that university with a strong online presence, um, I was able to find a few schools, they put some word out there, and then I was able to kind of find which ones worked best for me, which ones I felt like I kind of connected with the most, and that definitely led me to Walden. Um, and then I actually started using the LinkedIn group um, to find a little bit more about the Career Services Center specifically, and I was able to use the website to connect with um, the staff in the department. So that's one of the biggest things I did was just kind of locating those email addresses that way. Um, in the world that we live in today, you know, people, especially professionally, have their professional emails in several different places. They're not that difficult to find. So if you can just find one of those email addresses and get the word out there, um, that's just a great way to connect with people, um, especially if you aren't already connected with them on LinkedIn or something like that. If you don't really know these people, or if you don't have a connection in common, email is a great way to connect because it's not quite so formal um, and it's not using, you know, it has necessarily using like social media. Um, so that's definitely what I did first is just put the email out there and kind of saw what responses I got. Can we go to the next one? Sure. 
Okay, um, so just a few other sites that um, I kind of used and would recommend using. Um, definitely LinkedIn, like has been mentioned several times, because LinkedIn is just a great resource for finding um, people all over the country that you may not have been able to connect with from your hometown. So um, we've, we've talked a lot or heard a lot so far about um, introverts and extroverts, and I really think that this can work for anyone, no matter what you identify as. Um, Myers Briggs tells me that I'm an extrovert, <laughs> but I've always kind of felt like I'm more in the center, so I guess introvert. So um, I think that the things that I've done and have been able to do will really work for anyone um, because when you're, you know, working from home or if you're using your computer, you kind of have that mask and so you're not as, um, you don't put yourself out there quite as much as you would if you were in like a social gathering at a party or something like that. Um, putting yourself out there on the internet, sometimes people feel a little bit more comfortable that way. So using these websites like LinkedIn and then Twitter, um, specifically Twitter, because if you follow someone on Twitter, you don't necessarily have to get that request sent out and get um, the permission to follow that person every time. So if you find like a CEO or someone that you're interested in following just to learn more about their profession, um, you can pretty easily follow them as opposed to on Facebook when you friend someone, you have to wait for them to accept your friend request. So it's a little bit easier sometimes on Twitter to connect that way. Um, also, professional organizations are a great tool for this. If you look on LinkedIn, you can actually find a lot of these professional organizations listed. Um, and you can join those groups on there and be able to actually attend conferences, webinars, things like that, so you're going to build those connections from home. Um, and then the company's direct website, which is what I did for Walls, and I actually was able to find their direct website um, and go to the career services department and find the very specific information about the staff members here. Okay, so we're so tips glad that you I, did, Samantha. We have to tell you we're so <laughs> glad. Really so smart. That initiative. Yeah, it's a great story. I'm so Thanks. glad I did too. <laughs> um, so that's, that's actually one of my tips too is being able to step outside of your comfort zone. Um, like I said, I am a little bit more extroverted, so for me it didn't bother me that much to be able to send that email out. Um, but I know some people that can seem a little intimidating, um, so I would just recommend you know being able to step outside of your comfort zone a little bit. Um, send the email out. Don't necessarily be afraid of hearing the word no because it's possible it might happen. You know they might not respond or they might say no. Sorry, I don't have you know I don't really think it's possible to connect. Something like that. It's possible, but don't let that be a setback for you um, because it's definitely there's someone out there that it will work. Um, so be open for those new opportunities. Um, you know, you, have, you kind of just have to be willing to look around and find the one that's going to be perfect. You're probably not going to find it on your very first search. Um, the very first search that you type in on Google, you may not find that exact job that you're looking for, that exact connection or internship. But if you're open and you're willing to search a little bit, then you probably will be able to. Um, also keeping in mind that connections aren't a one-way street. So when I was looking for my internship, I couldn't just look for things that were going to benefit me. Um, you know, I, I was looking, I was already asking a lot, asking for a virtual internship, asking someone to be willing to give me tasks that I could do virtually to help them out. Um, but I didn't want that to be overbearing so much that I was going to be more of a burden than a help. So I wanted to make sure that I knew that they knew that I was willing to, you know, kind of do whatever they needed me to do. So don't turn down projects. Um, don't do things. Don't tell them that, you know, you're not willing to do certain things. Just be really open and be willing to, like, provide the experience that you have. Um, and then also try to do things that will build your online presence and portfolio. So things that you can get done virtually, you can publish those in some type of online portfolio, and you're actually helping yourself build your professional network and your professional portfolio that way. Okay, so um, I guess at this time, do we have any questions from the audience? Anyone have any ideas or questions? Thank you, Samantha. That was fantastic. And by Thank the you. way, Samantha is building her online portfolio right now because she's a speaker on our webinar, and we are recording it. So open it up for questions, comments. Nicole, um, excuse me, I'm sorry. Samantha, do you want to give um, our audience some ideas about some of the things you've been working on for us? Yeah, definitely. Um, so one of the biggest things that I've been working on is content. Um, so I've been doing a lot of research on different job banks and professional organizations that fit with the different majors and programs that are available at Walden. So I've been taking a lot of those 
um, programs and doing more in-depth research on um, job banks that might post job opportunities for students and then professional organizations that have opportunities for students. And once um, all of those are finished, they'll get published on the website. Uh, I've also been doing the job posting. So if you've been on the LinkedIn page, you've probably already seen some of the jobs that I've posted. Once those get sent in, they're forwarded to me, and then I go onto the LinkedIn group and post those. And I've also been doing some blog writing. Um, so if you've been on the blog recently, you've probably seen one of mine. Um, I've written about three or four, I think, so far in my end, but I'm planning on doing a few more before the end of the summer. Um, so you'll probably be hearing from me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> terrific. Excellent. Great. Thanks, Samantha. You've done a terrific job. So we're, we're just And she so fit perfectly into our team and the yeah. whole the whole online functionality of career services. Any comments from anyone? I know some of you are saying thank you, thank you, thank you for all the information or any networking strategies that some of you all have used that work good maybe on the introvert side or centrovert side as well or books that you recommend where it's completely open. Well, I'll share one brief story while we're waiting for a question to come into the queue. So um, I was looking to make a career transition from one field to the next. And so I, um, like Samantha, researched higher ed institutions in my area. And I called up an, um, a, a law school in my area. This was a long time ago. Um, when I lived in Virginia, and I asked if I could make an informational interview appointment with the career services director who worked at that law school because I wanted to figure out, I had a law degree and I wanted to figure out how I could combine law and higher education into a job. And so when I called to make that appointment, they informed me that she had just um, resigned from her position. And so it was going to be open. And so I asked him if I could, um, this was before email was really hot, so this is in the prehistoric <laughs> days. Um, so I, I asked him if I could walk in my uh, resume and cover letter. So I walked it in the next day, and actually I was the first application in the door for that job, and I actually did get that job. And I think uh, I had a real step up the, above the other candidates because I was in the right place at the right time. But I know you all are very familiar with informational interviewing. We wanted to talk about other strategies, but you know, if you can make that face-to-face -face connection with someone and impress them side of an interview before you even have an interview, that's a great way to really advance your career. Oh, great, Kelvin. Okay, Kelvin's sharing, and this is really great for those of you who travel a lot, and even if you don't travel a lot. He talks with people when he's on the plane, which most of us do. He says, I actually met a few people with high-ranking jobs that way. You could take business cards. I had a Walden student. Um, DBA grad, he was trying to break into higher ed, and I told him to start out at community college uh, level, although he was, he is quite the extrovert, and um, he's a very sharp networker, but he told me a story where he was sitting at a networking event for business people, and it was a small round table, and they were all asked to put their business cards on the table, and he glanced over and saw that the guy next to him's business card, he was a chair of a business school. So he got his information, he set up an informational interview, and after that he was hired. So informational interviews can be fantastic way to build your network and kind of interview in an informal context. And just remember what Lisa said earlier, you always want to think about what value you can provide and just really not want to ask straight out for a job. Like Lisa was going for a whole other reason when it turns out this woman was leaving and she landed the job. So you really never know. And this can be in um, things like hobbies, it doesn't always have to be in a professional context. Like going to these meetup groups with people with dogs, I mean, they have professional, you know, too. Many students are like, well, I don't know anyone in that field. I said, it doesn't matter. It could be family, friends, you play tennis, baseball, whatever. All those people know other people. And again, like, you just never know. And, and many introverts feel comfortable on a one-on-one, -on -one. it's just a great way to um, build that conversation. And you can just meet for coffee or even meet on the phone. And I tell students as well on LinkedIn, um, we have 50,000 alums all over the world. So take advantage of that. And many Walden alums or students are more than willing to help out their fellow Walden colleagues. Great. And we have a few more resources to discuss. We do. Great. So. Lisa, you can take it from here, our LinkedIn group that we've been discussing. 
Excellent. Thank you. And so Samantha mentioned that she has been posting jobs on our LinkedIn group this summer. And so we would highly recommend that you join that group. And just if you want a quick and easy way to join, you just go to the Career Center website at careercenter.walnu.edu and click on the LinkedIn button that's on the left-hand side. It will take you directly to the group. Okay, and uh, you can just click on the button to ask to join. And we've um, passed 4,000 members now. It's students and alumni, and there are a few recruiters on there as well. And so um, we post articles of interest, job listings, um, upcoming events, and uh, and also you can look for people within the LinkedIn mm -hmm. group and feel free to reach out to them independently. So um, we really encourage you to join. And also, like we mentioned, there are so many different LinkedIn groups. Join the one for your academic field for your professional association. Um, there's a very large Walden University general LinkedIn group that I think has about 10,000 members now. So we uh, really recommend taking advantage of this resource. And then the next slide, we also have um, a Facebook community and also a Twitter presence as well. So if you want to follow us on Twitter, um, Angie Lira, one of our um, senior career advisors, is uh, posting a tweet every day, uh, articles of interest. So um, it's always uh, fun 